I got the whole long day. Welcome back to another Wednesday Wednesday with your boys and girl rocks. I do this every Wednesday, pink central. Please like, subscribe, share. Hey, matter of fact, Wednesday Wednesday has been sponsored by Sex and the Cigar, the hottest, sexiest Facebook smoking group on Facebook. Uh, please check us out, man. Check us out. I, I, I digress. What's up, gentlemen? What's going on? Rockstar, hey, appreciate you. you. Appreciate you having us, man. Hey, I, I, I was I was forcing this, y'all. We got two Air Force guys. <laughs> gotta do that from the beginning, yo. No, nah, man, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you for your service, of course, for sure. Right, for sure, for sure. Likewise. Um, um, if, you, if you give a quick introduction. Uh, uh, for sure, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, so, my name is Jay Johnson, Javaro. Um, go by Big Sarge. Um, so, you'll, you'll see you see me personally on Instagram. Um, Big Sarge Brand uh, is my tag on Instagram. I have my handle. Um, originally, man, Tampa, Tampa native. Kind of mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. Um, grew up in Tampa, but moved here um, to DeSoto um, when I was in middle school. So spent a few years here in middle school, went back to Tampa, finished school, man. Ended up deciding to go um, Army first. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you know that. So I was actually you Army. That yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, my, that's, my, that's, my, that's my best car. I can play it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Can't say expecting it. So I was Army for six years, man. So originally... You know, not not as smooth as I am now, right? Just uh, just coming through, trying to get what I can, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, stayed army for six years. Um, it was a blessing, man. You know the deal, military. You meet yeah. people that you're gonna stay in contact with yeah. for all your life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, my army brothers. You know, we still we still locked in even mm -hmm. to the day. But for myself, man, I decided to to make a move. I was on deployment, man. Saw the light, right? Ran some Air Force cats on the deployment. Go over there behind behind their fence, man. They smiling and everybody happy. I'm like, man, what the heck going on over eating here? Good. What the hell? You know, eating good, yeah. All of that. Sleeping yeah. good. Yeah, I was to say, yeah, got their own room. <laughs> <laughs> air, air conditioning problem. So I was yeah. always in the back of my mind, man. So I, you know, I did that, got out. I thought I was done. My granddad was a chef. Um, so I thought I was gonna follow his footsteps. Okay. <laughs> Went to culinary art school in Colorado. I was stationed in Colorado my whole time, six years in the Army. Right on. Deployed a few times, things like well, that. Fort Collins? Uh, uh, no, at in Colorado Springs. Okay. In okay. Fort Carson, yeah. Mm, that's so, I mean. mm -hmm. so I was so I was there, man, and um Colorado still great place, man. Yeah. Um yeah. but stayed there. Thought I was gonna stay there for a while, finish school, all that good stuff. Didn't work out. Um one of my kids may have epilepsy. Oh, right. And um mm. seizures, you know, mm. all that good stuff, man. You know, when you go into medical. When you used to get free medical, and the first time you start going and paying for it, right. man, that's that's yeah. it. Hey, nah, it become real, hey, real quick, don't it? Oh, man. That's, that's a real, that's a real awakening, man. Real, real quick, especially when the young cat got to go to the neurologist. You know, hey, right? yeah, yeah. if I try you sixteen, yeah. but um, yeah, decided to get back in, man. When that happened, and uh, ended up coming Air Force. Remembered all the the smiling faces, and mm -hmm. I went Air National Air National Guard first, okay. right? Did that for a year, and then I crossed over and went went back to the Air Force. Stayed Air Force man the rest of the time. Ended up doing 20, 23 years and some change, almost twenty four years total. Right. And um, respect, respect. Appreciate it. Um, ended up doing that and wouldn't change a thing, right? Um, even though you know when you're active, we all know mm -hmm. it's pain in the ass, and you deal with deal with this, deal with that. Yeah, uh, they were deployments. Yeah, being separated, family, you yeah. know, kids, all that good stuff. Yeah. But it, but it was good, man. Never, never uh, would have thought I would ended up with four degrees because that was not me. That's you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. but you know, Air Force, man, they go. Oh yeah, they push they, 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 they <laughs> yeah. You can you can stay at E five or E six. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or you can go to school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so it was one of those things. So just start, decided to do it, man. Knocked it out. Got two associates, a bachelor's, and finished a master's. And all oh, while wow. I was active duty, you know, yeah. government, government paid for it, Man, you know, I didn't pay one dime for none of my degree, you know. Um, so did that, and always, man, Dallas was always kind of in the back of my mind from staying here, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my tight friends are here, you know. I got friends back home in Tampa, but all my tight friends, man, are, are here. Yeah. So yeah, I get um, decided to come back, man, and I'm here, man. You know, um, fourth year, fourth year here in Dallas. So far, so good. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. As far as me, I'm a simple person, man. You know, um, keeping it real. Grew up Little Rock, Arkansas. You know, right. North Little Rock. Oh, that's North, how you know me. 
Okay, I get you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm a little Rock Arkansas native. Came in when I was 19, you know, into the Air Force immediately. You know what I'm saying? Um, didn't skip go or anything like that. Um, done 23 years in the Air Force. Retired, you know, in 2018. But uh, while I was in the Air Force, everybody know you got to embrace the suck in order to have fun. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that fight against the suck, not me. Mm -hmm. I embrace it. I enjoyed everything about it, even the deployments, you know. Yeah, I done went to some crazy places, but you already know it ain't the place, it's the people that you're mm -hmm. around. Oh, yeah. So, 100%. Absolutely. If Absolutely. you're around good people, you know, no matter where you're at, you could be digging a ditch. Worst situation, but yeah, you're yeah, you you with have good people. people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what yeah. you mean. So, yeah. you know, I've had my experiences with um being an Air Force guy with group army guys, you know, I was at uh, Camp Spiker for six months and it was our army, you know, and you already know how that goes. You know, you know, know how many fights you get into? Okay, okay. No, no, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it wasn't nothing like that. You know? <laughs> Everybody was on the same team ish. <laughs> <laughs> but um, real talk is um, like Jay said, I wouldn't change anything about it. I had a good time in the military and the military would not make you rich, but it would give you the tools to help propel you forward, you know, as far as the life skills that it gives you and being put in charge of people mm -hmm. at a young age, you, you mature early. Yeah, for sure. I so um, here today, this was something, being in Dallas was a goal for me and my wife when we had um got together and we was over in, I'm gonna say it, Clovis, New Mexico. Oh, man. <laughs> Big Air Force had sent me to um Cannon Air Force Base in Clovis, New Mexico. And we came over here to visit Dallas on a long weekend. It was like, you know what? That right there is what we want to do. Yeah, okay. Okay. So yeah. once I finished up in Okinawa, we moved here to Dallas. And before I left Okinawa is when I started making the plans on what I wanted to do with ROM. And that's what pushed me and propelled me to pushing the ROM brand <clears throat> and bringing something to the masses that is very much overlooked. You yeah. know, a lot of people don't look at age wrong and pairing it with a cigar. Yeah, so right. that's why I came over with the company, Black Mallard. And soon enough, we're going to have a soft lunch coming 2025 with the first line of Black Mallard rum. Man, it's dope, man. So, so man, but so, so both y'all entrepreneurs, man. Yeah. Uh, 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 Jay, like how much of the, the Air Force, how much of that did, did, did you did, uh, produce what you got going on now with Rebel? And we were one Texas. You know, so the his the history of that, like me and me and my wife talk and she always said, Man, like, like you one of the ones like you're addicted, you're addicted to always doing something, you're addicted to work. You're yeah, addicted. yeah, yeah. And I think yeah. so my so everybody's experience in the military is different, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mine was when I was army man, like, you know, E1, E2, E3. You ain't making no cash like that. Not you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You got you, you good. You living, right? You, you, if you do it right, you shouldn't have no debt and stuff like that. However, you know, uh, you know how it is. We're young, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we want to stunt, you yeah. know what I mean? And we want to do whatever, right? Strip club. So yeah, all that. <laughs> so then growing up, man, both my both my mom and dad, right? They were they were both go getters, you know, in mm -hmm. a sense, like. They had their own jobs. However, they had started the cleaning service together. They here in DeSoto or uh, Tampa? I was in Tampa, yeah. Okay. Um, so I was always around people, man, that was that was always doing more, mm -hmm. you know, even before the military. Yeah. So, you know, I saw that and I kind of I kind of just became who I was, right? Or who I who I who I who I am today. And when I was army, man, I I always wanted more, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, my paycheck, okay, it's cool, but I want a little more. So I always have another job. I always in the army, man, I, if you order Chinese food in Colorado Springs, I was your delivery driver. <laughs> in my Cadillac. Yeah. You know, bumping out cash. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pulling up to your spot. <laughs> you know, two twenties in the back, all that dumb shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, tell me to bump and got your food. You know what I mean? Get my tips, you know what I'm saying? All that stuff. So always I just kind of carried that my whole career. Um, when I was young, man, like my my brothers and, and my family back home, they was always into different things, you know what I mean? So you know, one of the things was music, you know, mm -hmm. um, had a couple of people I was close with that DJ. So I always learned the ones and twos, you know, from DJing, you know. Well, you were you a DJ at one point? Uh-huh. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack of all trades over here. Yeah. I see that. My whole military that. career, for the most part, man, I, I was DJing to make, to make money. Yeah. You know what I mean? On the side. Yeah. It was fun. 
You get to meet people. At the E Club and all that or what? like outside? a little a little bit. So in Colorado, uh it wasn't that, it wasn't necessarily in the in the in the E Club because I wasn't trying to get into no mess. Yeah. Right. You right. know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, downtown, huh? It was downtown. Yes, sir. Yeah. It was downtown. I had a few I had a few spots in the city that I that I spun at um on from Wednesday to Friday, man. Boom, boom, boom. I was I have a book. You know, so Saturday, was, Saturday and Sunday was my time. Was that was that when Rebel was created? <laughs> So, so I, I think, I think Rebel, Rebel was kind of like, you know, the thought was always there. I didn't, I had no idea that I would get into business doing this kind of stuff. I didn't, I you know, to me. but um, to me, yeah. full circle, it all ties in. So I mentioned I, I came here and I lived in DeSoto uh, for a while. And when I was here in DeSoto, I was rapping when I was 13, 14. Come on now. You know what I mean? Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was here in the I was here in Dallas, you know, rapping, man, doing little shows. Got a click called the Chain Gang. Oh, um, okay. It was a cat that was decently known around here, Oak Cliff Assassin. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if y'all ever heard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, he he in the in the in the eighties, you know, late eighties, early nineties, he was yeah. doing this thing. So, yeah, I was in that, you know, and all of that kind of just kind of stayed with me, you know. When I was first rapping, I wasn't writing, you know. Um, I had a dude that was ghostwriting. I was 13, 14. I had oh, yeah. my voices is deep. Now than as it was back what now than was back then, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. So they were like, man, you, you should do something, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I was just kind of I was just kind of like steady learning how to spin. They were like, nah, you need to get on the mic. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I'm like, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. See that. yeah. So yeah. so that's kind of how I started. And um that seed was planted back then. So I guess rebel kind of formed just from from music. So um Army, DJ, ended up meeting some cats. They had their own studio in Colorado Springs. And um, they needed somebody to spend for their shows, so I started I started doing um, music with them, right? And then it just kind of morphed into, man, we need you, man, to be a part of this, yeah, you know? Yeah, so yeah. I was a part of the studio game, a part of like the whole promotion game back then, um, just doing stuff, man, and, and it all just kind of just stayed with me, yeah, you know? Yeah. So all through my Air Force career, I would DJ, station in Korea, DJing in Korea, oh, man. you know what I mean? Uh, okay. The whole nine, you know? So So music was always with me. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Mm-hmm. And um, transitioning out, it just so happened that some cats that I knew from Desoto way back then, they were here when I retired in 2020. Mm-hmm. They were here right before COVID. We met. They mm-hmm. were telling me some things they had going on, and that's kind of really how Rebel started. Man. Okay. It was just kind of like understanding, like I can make an impact by giving back. Um, yes. Always, always coach sports. Mm-hmm. Right. I was a football player um, in school and high school and all that good stuff. At the Soto High. At the Soto. Yeah. Okay. At the Soto, okay. and then at Plant, we call it Plant University back home in Tampa. Okay. Um, played football, football at Plant, and that was always with me. So almost immediately when I was in the army, man, I was like 20 years old and I was coaching little league sports. Mm, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And we all know music and sports mm-hmm. goes together. You know, it's, it's, it's hand in hand. Yep. You know, yep. there's athletes that want to rap and act, yep. right? Yep. And there's rappers that want to be athletes. You know what I mean? So yep. it's just, you know, just wear a jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you wear a jersey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 So that's kind of how, how 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 it ended up, man. Rebel was was really initially, man. I met some cats that was behind the camera and also doing music. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I thought about how I can kind of help out and bridge the gap. And that's where Rebel really started. Yeah. So Rebel is an entertainment group. So Rebel Entertainment Group Incorporated. When we first started, we thought we were just going to be dabbling into music. Yeah. And and the camera behind the yeah. camera. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it just morphed into more because you know when you get into stuff, you start seeing like there may be gaps, right? Mm-hmm. And and instead mm-hmm. of always, it's always a middleman, right? Always. And instead of instead of always <laughs> like having to go through the middleman, it was like, man, let's get into this because we can do this. Why not? Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's where it. the whole print game, I put that all the way. you know, the print, the print game came in, print apparel, you know, that's where, you know, printing things like your, your ashtray. Yeah. That's where all that stuff kind of initially came into. And it was just a matter of meeting the right people and expanding the network in order to, to deliver that. Okay. You know, so, yeah. so that's really where Rebel is. So right now Rebel is into um, event hosting, mm-hmm. right? So we've done some events right in your in your backyard, yeah. right? That's pretty ended up being pretty, pretty dope, close, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, but it also morphed into the printing because when you're hosting events, guess what? You need you need material, yeah. you need flyers, yeah. right? Yeah. You need flyers, yeah. you know. Then you're running the people, you're running the people that might you might want to bend for your event, and then, you know they need things. They need like 
They need like the, the canopies, yeah, right. right? With yeah. their logos. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where all the print stuff came from. You know, it just kind of organically grew into that, you know. And we talked earlier about the trademark. Yeah. So yeah. when we went to the when we went through the whole trademark, um, I don't even know what to call it, man. It's a lot of red tape in that too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But um what we what we noticed is we couldn't initially we want to get Rebel Entertainment Group trademarked into event hosting and media production. Mm, come on now. But as we went through that whole um, process, we found out that actually you should probably just go ahead and 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 start your trademark into this one pocket. Yeah. And that's where one Texas was born. Oh, yeah, gotcha. yeah. Okay. So one Texas is yeah. LLC. Okay, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. it's a subsidiary of Rebel Entertainment Group. Now, now how that how that collab happened? No, did for what I understand, I don't know. Did, did you buy that company from somebody else, or did you? Mm -hmm. did, okay. Mm -hmm. So it ended up being that first it started. Okay, I, think, well, I think early last summer, I think we talked about mm -hmm. you. You were just about to acquire or, or something. Something. Yeah. I know it was, you couldn't tell me everything, but you, you mentioned something about it. So I was I was. One Texas was a group initially. Mm -hmm. It was a group of folk, right? And you know how it is, man. Whenever you get a lot of hands in the pot, you know, and agreements and goals, sometimes it don't all line up. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, so it was just better for us to for them to take their ideas and do something different, and then for me to keep One Texas and then grow it myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yep. so that's where One Texas was, you know, kind of came from. And um, so what is one Texas? What takes the media group? One Texas is a media group, okay. yeah, media company, um, full scale media production, whether it's podcasts, whether it's short films, whether it's music videos, mm -hmm. whether it's I said podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Um, one, one of the things right now that we're really when I leave here tonight, I'm gonna be watching the clock. When I leave here tonight, um, I'm going to a restaurant here in Cedar Hill to pitch them on us being able to come into their establishment. And really kind of highlight the key features of what they do, get it on film, and be able to package it up so they can take it and market it okay. and advertise. Yeah, yeah. So that's really where we're focusing at because I, you know, you guys know in, in Dallas, man, you you can't ride down the street more than more than three minutes before you see a restaurant or a oh, bar yeah. or Absolutely. you know, owned by an entrepreneur. Absolutely. You know? And Absolutely. we all know how tough it is being an entrepreneur, right? So my thing is yeah, if we can become the Costco. Or the Sam's Club to drive drive one prices shop. down, one stop uh, shop. Whether it's you need branding, you need your you need your menus done, we can do that. Yeah. You come in, but on the rebel side, we can do that. Rebel digital side, we can do that. I was gonna, I was gonna ask that. So mm -hmm. you don't just you don't just print. You can make a digital. Oh yeah, uh, digital uh, uh, menu as well. Mm -hmm. All of that websites and all that website thing? everything. Man, come on, designs man. everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah. yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. That's so crazy. still very you know still fledgling man and still you know. Um, Putting putting one thing behind another. So my thing is this: we all know this from military. <clears throat> you can jump out in the streets half naked, not ready to go, and it ain't be good. Yeah, right. So we just been kind of taking our time and putting the steps in play, man, Understood. and kind of kind of enjoying the process. What they say, smelling the roses as you go go forward. So that's what we are, man. And you'll see Rebel Digital. We haven't quite launched it yet. Mm -hmm. We're just operating, but we'll be launching that in the next month. Month and a half, we'll see some stuff for Rebel Digital. Right on, bro. You always have a pleasure to work with you, man. So, you know, Thank you. whatever we got to do, man, of course. Thank you. Oh, Thank pleasure. Always oh, pleasure. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, you mentioned um, um, Okinawa when you started your, your, that's not when you started your room journey, isn't when you started going to the process of, of, of doing your own work. Well, pretty much that was the seed. It was, Okinawa. Did something happen to Okinawa for that happen? Have you had Okinawa uh, whiskey? I have had uh, the Suntory. Uh, I have had, you know, okay. a couple of the whiskeys, the Hibiki, the okay. Hibiki yeah. you know. But if if you know anything about Suntory, you know Suntory bought Jim Bean. Yep, I do know that. You know, so yep. Yep. that's how they got a lot of their whiskey, mm -hmm. the LTDs for gotcha. them. Gotcha. All right. With that being said, um, me, I got roots in the Caribbean. You know, one of my biggest things was, like Jay said, you know, he kind of alluded to, there was a lot of things that formulated this person in front of him, mm -hmm. you know, for one, I'm, you know, I'm a PJ, PJK, you know, project kid, mm -hmm. you know, the quote unquote bad side of the tracks, you know, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you can, you can build yourself up out of that. And one of the biggest things that I learned growing up, uncles, they were entrepreneurs, you know, um, whether they were brick mason or they was contract farmers, you know, one of my uncles gave me, um, 
the work ethic of mm -hmm. getting up, getting it done. That's it. And I carried that with me to the military. Um, now, for me, rum has always been in my blood. While I was at Yokota, mm -hmm. while I was at Yokota, mainland Japan, I got with a guy and I, I shout him out, you know, um, ROX Rocks Fontaine. Um, that was my my producer in Japan. I used to rap, do shows in Tokyo and all around there. Stop, stop playing. No joke. No joke. Yes, I, come on. I got man. video and all that. We got the OGs on the show right now. <laughs> got video stop and all playing. that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we used to do shows around there. And one of the biggest things that used to always ask us was our our drink of choice when we would show up to a show. And they'll put it up on the blackboard or they'll put it up behind the bar oh. and say, This is what the act is drinking. Oh, yeah. And cats will be, you oh, know, bad. My God. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, one of the things that I always do, I keep my head on the swivel. And I'm like, I'm watching them. I'm like, man, they they making good money off of us mm -hmm. performing and our label yep. of what we're drinking. Yep. So once that um subsided, I started just thinking more on the entrepreneur side. And when I got to Okinawa, it became evident that, you know, you put in hard work, things come down. Yeah. So when I when I met Jay, Jay was out in Hawaii. I was at Okinawa. And I pitched to him and my other brother. You know, <laughs> while we was just sitting there, we was in Masao about to do an inspection. You know, it was yeah, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So I was telling him, you know, this is what I was on Swap, where y'all at? So, so you see that? Yeah. I wore that shirt. I knew it was going to come up. <laughs> I was at Kadena. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I know what Swap is. Hey, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a uh, grunt, man. I was a grunt. Look, look. I, I will not hate on you. I will not hate <laughs> You know, cats from Swap and cats from um, Hanson. You just don't mess with them. Yeah. They're a different breed. You know what I'm saying? It, let it go. Let it go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're a different breed. You know, we, we, were, we weren't even allowed on Kadena. Man, shoot. Sure. We, we, we was over we was over a hundred on Kadena. You know what I'm saying? Hey, shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it oh, I'm keep it a buck. Keep with it a buck in this one. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. We was over a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. But real talk is um these are things that, that build character, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And when you build relationships across military services, why can't you do that across mm -hmm. your community? Agreed. They showed me how to be able to speak better. Performing showed me how to speak better. Like Jay said, you know, the military paid for my bachelor's degree, my associate's degree, for me to get certain certifications that pay me more than my degree. Yeah. Yeah. So with that being said, um, I went from having lemons to having lemonade. Mm -hmm. Now, do I got the lemonade mix complete? No, but we working on it. Yep. I'm not going to go out there naked, nor am I going to give somebody a half baked product mm -hmm. without actually putting it out to the sources. Mm -hmm. Hey, try this out. Mm -hmm. Check this out. And like I, I brought you one. Yeah. Yeah. Check this out. So with that being said, you know, it was a lot of things in the making to get me to this point, which I appreciate you allowing me to come on the platform and speak yes, about sir. it. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm very appreciative to you. And I, like I told you before, I know some people that know you and they was like, hey, that's the dude. Like, oh, so, man. I'm not trying to credit. hype you up, but. You know, too much credit. Uh, uh, <laughs> come on now. Hey, good people, man. Good people. You know, you, 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 know, you, you tend to. We recognize for that, yep. you know, definitely better than the other the other side of the car. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so would you? Would you? Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, of course, we're all very pro military. Uh, would you? Uh, I guess would you guys say everybody should go to the military out of high school, or, or if they think they ain't going to college, <laughs> is that a debate? Mind if I jump on this? Is, is that a debate, or is that what, you know? I, okay. I feel about that. I'm gonna be very. I mean, I'm saying that because. I, so the military shaped me. If it wasn't military, I would not be here today. Uh, I, I probably, we all, we I all are the same. We all the same. Fact. You know what I mean? So it was either military or like, you know, streets type joint. You know? I'll put it to you like this. You know, I've been to some select countries around the world mm -hmm. where out of high school, people do two years in the military. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, United States is one of those countries that the military is still a volunteer service. Mm -hmm. In all actuality, I don't think 
I don't think we would have as many problems today if people did know that they had to do at least two years. I agree. And I don't think it would be I a agree. bad thing. I agree. But there's a caveat because I've talked about this before. The caveat is you do your two years, but you do your two years abroad, mm -hmm. away from the country. So you can understand when you come back to the country, what it is that you're protecting. Yeah. yeah. If you do it just yeah. right down the street, yeah. you never get that yeah. full effect. Yeah. But That's if it. you do your two years abroad, yeah. and then you come back, or you say, appreciate more. yes. Yeah. And I think that we have a lot more well-rounded personnel because I agree. you get to see what people do voluntarily. Yeah. And you get to see how people have to interact because you know being on Okinawa, you know, we was like in the fishbowl. Yeah. Yep. And the, the local community, they're watching. Oh, yeah. Okay. So with that being said, we have a way of carrying ourselves in the community and having self-respect because we had to do it abroad because that was part of our job. I feel like so we all know that on less than what? 1%? Actually, sir. Less than one percent, yes, right? Sir. Yeah. So, I think I think the military is a great option. However, I think not everybody is necessarily cut for it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. So, I, I would say, like, even some of my own family members might ask me, "Nah, was I cut for it when I first joined?" Nope. You know, no, and I, I and I had I had some rocky I had some rocky my army career. It was definitely some rocky roads and that, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, you know, once I got in the Air Force and realized at that point that, yo, this this is actually an, enhances my life. Yes. Yeah. Then it was more of me being an adult. You know, when I was Army, man, I was just, I was a young cat from Florida, man. You know, Florida boy, uh, y'all know, man. Hey, Florida boy, yeah, man, it was some of the wildest cats yeah, running around the military. Real. You know? <laughs> For real. And, I, and that, was, that was me. You know, that was me when I was, when I was young. But yeah. fortunately... Like you said, high, higher power, right? Yeah. I had people praying for me, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and, and it worked out, you know? So I would say, no, not necessarily everybody should serve, but I definitely think everybody should look at it. Yeah. That's an option. Awesome. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. Now, being an entrepreneur, man, what's, what's been the toughest road for you, Jay, being an entrepreneur? The gaps. So many gaps out there. We talked about the trademark, right? Not even knowing yeah. about that, not knowing even yeah. necessarily how much I should be spending on that. Um not knowing the layout for that and talking about networking, right? Yep. Um, that's probably the hardest two things, the gaps and not knowing, but you need a network to fill the gaps to mm. help you know. Yep. So yep. I think that's I think that's the hardest part. Yeah, of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah, and I know you set up some networking events with um, that's it. Um, um, yeah, I, that's I, it. I forgot the exact name of it, but but I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Networking chill. Yeah. That's what we call yeah. it. Like whenever yeah. we whenever we're doing our network. I mean, I'm one of the I'm, I'm like you. We work hard, play hard, right? Yeah. So, but I always, I also think, you know, in our community, we don't do enough open sharing. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. that's what a network is. Like because I know what we like to share. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like but that. we don't always network. Yeah. So, and I make it a point when we do those events to at least make people, or not make people, but suggest, heavily suggest that people network. You yeah. know, take the time. I don't care if you just spend 10 minutes of that three, four hour time span mm -hmm. to just talk to one person. Mm -hmm. You know, at least at least you've done that and you never know what that, that conversation can lead to. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. For sure. You want to, sir? As far as entrepreneur, um, I say pretty much beginning is the most difficult part because people will have a fantastic idea that they just let stew in their head mm -hmm. and they change the concept of their idea. So, I think getting started was the hardest part. Mm -hmm. But once you get started, you start seeing different avenues and laying out. Now, Jay alluded to the networking. That's where I fall into that. I read a whole book. Mm -hmm. So I'm always looking for this, that, and the third that's going to relate. And if it don't relate to me, I'm going a, I'm to a kick it off to Jay. I'm going to kick it off to somebody that I know that is out there doing something. Yep. Yep. You know, yep. it may not be yep. for me, but I can be the segue for somebody to That's get what that. That's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that could get that next person started. Yep. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You're 100% you're right, man. 100% right. Now, now, Jay, do you, do, you, is it, do you feel it's a difference um, um, 
with, uh, I guess, business in Texas versus business in, in Florida? I think, I think it's always, it's always a difference because number one, the rules are going to be different no matter what state you're in, right? <laughs> um, for us, we're veterans. So the great thing about Texas is so, so many um, programs out here for veterans to tap into, yeah. right? To, yeah. to start to start to expand the network and go to somebody that can actually and willing to hey yeah let me show you this yeah we just sat on a um, a call about a month ago yeah um in Arlington and it was all about figuring out how to line your business up and how to get those government grants mm. you know mm. Uh, mm. so I think man it, it for veterans we got a we have a very almost an unfair advantage on that mm -hmm. you know no, no I agree yeah <clears throat> it's got a little bit of a head start but I get I would say. We, we we earned it though. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I would say definitely, no matter where you are, it's going to be a little different to kind of get started because guess what? The rules here, as far as even even in Dallas, even in Texas, I started I started Rebel doing in twenty twenty in twenty twenty one, like right after COVID, right after COVID twenty one twenty one twenty two. I thought it was in the twenty twenty. Going down too smooth, bro. The like well going. Hey, 2020. I, 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 I tried to ten. I was fishing. I was fishing for everything in twenty twenty, but I think we actually started in twenty. Yeah, let me let me get a little bit more out for you. Yeah, yeah. That's so, all right there, good sir. So yeah. just so just in that alone, between starting Rebel and starting in Texas, Rebel, I couldn't take advantage of the hundred percent disabled program for veteran business business owners here in Texas. During that pandemic time frame, they shut off the, the fact that, you know what, if you start your business during this pandemic, we're not allowed to give you the same benefits as you did. They cut off the benefit of really? you know the taxes when you like when yeah. you go for business taxes. Yeah. Yes. Right. Like now for one Texas, I was after that with one Texas. So now I don't have to even claim taxes for five years in the state of Texas. Stop playing. Straight up, hundred percent disabled veterans. Uh, mm -hmm. But 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 when I when Rebel because I the time was wrong, I still had to claim, I had to do that. So I had to file taxes. Mm -hmm. So even that alone, right? It's just I think time is important, and then where you are is important. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's gonna be different rules. So it's gonna be different. For sure. now, see, I like I like what you just hit mm -hmm. because that was one of the things that I wanted to convey is um, if anybody is a veteran that's in Texas that has started that LLC, you can get your startup fee back from the state of Texas. Mm, I don't know that. Because being a veteran in Texas and starting a veteran-owned business, you don't get hit with that tax. So that has been that. given Straight. back to me because I talked mm -hmm. to the Texas Veteran Board and they sent me back my startup fee. That's crazy. I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. That's crazy, man. Man, so Jay, man, I mean, what would you say? Uh, and, and let's go to this, the, the marketing aspect. Uh, um, startup company want to come to you, uh, restaurant or whatever. What what is what's been your, I guess, your most successful business that you've helped start up? So the the most successful business, I got a cat um, that I made. And, 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 and how's that ROI? Like, how, how is that? You know, how, how's that? How's that? So I'm, I'm I'm gonna explain it without get, getting too much in their business. I'm gonna explain it in. So what you know, layman's terms, so we can all just go. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, but he has a company. He's a he's a veteran as well, not retired. He's also he didn't retire. He got out, and then he came on. He's an Arlington cop, mm -hmm. right? But he's looking at retiring in about two three years from now, mm -hmm. um, and he wanted to start start getting into his own entrepreneurship. So what he did, he went the franchise route. Okay, right, and he franchised. You might have seen it on 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 Rebel. I share it quite often. And, um, Buttermilk Scott Pasha. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he went from when we first met them. Uh, they had one store in Mansfield. Now they've got three stores. Oh man. So yeah, it's very it was very. It, was, it, was, it, was in the last what two three years? Two years. Yeah, two years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we met them, and they were just looking for. You know, they had their own. They were doing stuff on their phones. You know, they were. They were getting their products on their phones and, and marketing, doing little videos, mm -hmm. but he wanted something a little more crisp, a little more clean, a little more professional. So we hired us, man, and it's been kind of a match made in heaven. So, so, so how, did, how did that scale up work? Do you just give them ideas? Do you, do, you, do you hit the ground running? Do you take their, you know, their ideas and produce it to life? Like, how does that match make and meet up? With somebody yeah, so so it's, it's, very, it's very key for them. I'm talking about them specifically because whenever you have a franchise, you still have to follow the rules. Yeah, you do. Right. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. <clears throat> he was very adamant to us, like, okay, I want this, but it's got to fit within the, the overall scheme or the or the overall um brand of the, the whole company. Uh -huh. So 
learning that, but learning like, okay, based on that, we can still do things at your shop, right? Mm -hmm. To highlight you and what you what you bring to the table. And then also kicking that for his social media. He was able to use that and do a small commercial and he was able to get people, more people in the door. Mm -hmm. So that Mansfield shop, man, it's one of the better, one of the better Buttermilk Scott pie shops in this whole region. Mm. So he used that and he's been running since. Sure, sure. Man, it sounds sound like he's uh, be, be, on the, be on the team with uh, uh, scaling up to the road, bro. What's going on? Is that, is that in the works? Well, that is in the works. I'm <laughs> glad that you asked. Yeah. <laughs> because um, that is also in the works. Like I told you um, a little bit earlier, I'm working with him to do the clothing. I burned him a little bit. But um, for the clothing and the design, he already got a guy that's going to help me out. And 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 the, and the clothing for for the for the run brand? Yes. Okay. And it's it's gonna be um still blue collar. It's gonna be still focused at you know remaining affordable because I'm not trying to do anything that's gonna kill people and make them break their pocket. Yeah. You know because I know coming up I ain't have it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying you know we all alluded to where we came from. So why would I want to go mm -hmm. a route where I'm putting somebody in the hardship to have something good. Yeah. yeah. So yes, Jay has been um pivotal. And I say that not loosely. He's yeah. been very pivotal in getting me to see different avenues mm. with what he brings to the table, what his designers have brought to the table, and the turnaround on certain things that I've already asked for has been. Hey, this is what we I got. Know, I don't go nowhere else. After, 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 uh, we start, I, I don't go nowhere else. No. Thank you. Know, that's nice. That's nice. So, man. you know, no, for sure. like I said, I have to give people their flowers early. You know what I'm saying? We, we're not promised tomorrow, the next day, or the next moment. So, I, like I told you about yourself, you know, thank you. But I also always thank Jay because yeah. he's given me different avenues to look at. Yeah. Now, he bats it off because he's a humble dude. Yeah. But in all actuality, he's done a whole lot to help me keep my path going and offer me, hey, man, you know, have you looked at this? And mm -hmm. we doing that. I was like, man. So I'll sit back, you know, I'll go back to the lab, put some stuff together. Then I throw it in. Hey, man, what you think about this? So with working with um, Texas One Studio, mm -hmm. It's been phenomenal, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because his team of go-getters, I won't call them young bulls or anything like that. No, they some go-getters. Yeah. Because they have fresh ideas. Um, we sat down, what was it, end of last year? So it was right before one of your trips. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was around like October, September. We had sat down, and the things that these young gentlemen was – conveying i was like man i like this yeah i like that too and i like that so to be exact he gave me i came there for a plate he gave me a buffet exactly. mm -hmm. and yeah. i was like yeah so can i go this route he was like yeah but can i go that route too yeah yeah so i haven't met a no just yet yeah, yeah i know don't you mean you know what I mean? Know you. <laughs> i do know what you mean about that. And, and my thing my thing with that like just like just like military, like we grew up, mm -hmm. right? Networking and mentoring, all right? So, and you know this rock star, I can talk to you about something, I can I can give you a quote, but I'm not married to that. Like, right, right. If right. something fits you better, yeah, that's true. By all means, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Go, go, go do that, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, I, I do feel that, for sure. <clears throat> for sure, for sure, yeah, definitely that. Definitely right. So uh, I, I think Jay told me about um if we talk about uh, the rum a little bit, he mentioned some Colorado. Can we can we go in a little bit about all right? Uh, I, I can I can touch I can touch on that slightly because right now we're we're still in um the finishing stages. Mm -hmm. But I went out to Colorado to meet up with the independent distiller. And what I want to do is keep a rum in the United States. I want it to be an American brand. Because most of our stuff that we get, you already see the different labels and the different countries where mm -hmm. it comes from. Yep. So why can't we have something that we produce right here? Yeah. And when I conveyed it to them, they pretty much done me the same way. They was like, 
yeah, we can do that. Yeah. So um, so it's not a surprise to anybody. When it comes out, the first line will be a six-year run, and it will be a six-year smooth run, pretty much like that seven-year right there. Mm -hmm. Smooth, yeah. tasting, yeah. give you a nice finish. Mm -hmm. We're working on that. And it's going to be a six-year. The next one after that will be a 12-year. And the next one after that will be an 18-year. And then I will produce an XO. And the XO will only be a limited spread. Only be a limited spread. But the other three will be the, the flagship. But the six-year will be the blue-collar brand. Mm -hmm. Something good, not too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Something that you can enjoy. Yeah, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna mention that. So, so uh, you know, rum. Is, is, is we talk off camera. Um, um, rum is the traditional pairing of cigars. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, are Are you going the cigar route? I will be going the cigar route, and um, right now my focus is like we talked about off camera. Um, is to get the brand going first. Mm -hmm. Then I will produce the sticks. I've already had talks with um a person here in Fort Worth. They just opened up a cigar lounge. And he told me once I get the brand going, he wants to talk to me immediately. Mm. So I will be going to this person. And I got another person that um, and it was it's kind of crazy. I was flying back to Little Rock, got off the plane, and this this cat started talking to me. He was like, So, you know, this is what I do, and I got this going on. on a plane. And I'm on the plane, I'm sitting up there with him. He says, So what do you do? I said, well, I got a long brand coming in. He was like, stop right there. Um, he's a importer exporter, but he's a West African importer exporter. And he told me straight up and down, please, I want your brand because that would be fantastic for West Africa to see an American black mm. bringing something mm. there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. without you not know, just West Africa though, you know, I mean, yeah. It, it's going it's going to flood yeah but these are the um the avenues that I've been presented yeah so far I got two solid and the other ones I'm working mm -hmm. and even with um going to Colorado Springs I'm going to circle back around to that real quick going to Colorado Springs and talking with the business owner there and talking with his second in command there second in command but talking to his his assistant they both were floored because when I started showing them designs and boards that I've already put together, there was mm -hmm. like, well, there ain't really much that we can tell you about where you want to go. You already know where you want to go. And you know how you want it to taste. They said that's the main things that we've been working with people on is what they want. Mm -hmm. They just come here and say they want I something. Want yeah. You came here and you said, this is what I want. This is how I want it to taste. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. is what I want it to pair with. Done the process already. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they were happy because their load was light. Yep, yep. So what what, what, what made you? Uh, did you go to several different people? Uh, what made you choose that one specific uh, uh, bottle? Of the first the first company that I wanted to go with was down in Florida, and when I talked with them, they talked real good in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, I'm going to come down. I want to tour the area. I want to see what your facility is like. Yeah. And i like to sit down and talk with you. I came back from a trip, called my man up, and he told me, oh, well, I don't think we're going to be able to um, complete this task. So that first avenue was already shut down. But Did he give you a reason? What did he say? His reason was that they already had got flooded. His yeah. market... Was okay, cool. okay, okay. So I didn't stop right there. Mm -hmm. I kept going because I had a second, third, and fourth distributor that I was looking at. Mm -hmm. But he was the one that I was looking at majorly because it was down in Florida. And, you know, that curing process, when you put it in the barrels, you want that that yeah, little bit of humidity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now. Yeah, with the leaf, right? With the leaf yeah. and yeah. with the rum. Colorado brought me a different spin because when you're talking about the mile high area, you're saying that the humidity is, is not as much as Florida. Mm -hmm. It's not as much as that, Florida. That's an interesting process right there. Yeah. Yeah. But what he brought to me was a flavor complexion that was different from what I had got from the guy from Florida. Mm -hmm. I was like, I like that. 
-hmm. I like what you're doing. Not to mention that they were able to take me into a lab and my man showed me a process. He was like, if you don't like this taste, this is where we can go. So that's what made me lean more towards them than anybody else because mm -hmm. they could show me the process. They could show me that they already get, get the barrels that we want. Like that one says that it was stored in sherry cags. Yep. He was like, if that's what you want, we got sherry cast barrels right here. We even got smoke oak over here. We got this over here. So they gave me options. Yeah. Yeah. So with that being said, the dream came to fruition with seeing what they hit. Mm -hmm. So now I'm just waiting, like we talked about, we kicked them around the table a little bit earlier, the trademark. Yeah. Once the trademarking is done on what I want for the bottle, we're off to the races. And that's why I say 2025 would be a soft lunch. And what I want to do is the same thing that you, I, Etorian had talked about mm -hmm. was a little soft lunch in Dallas. Mm -hmm. But I'm also doing another lunch in Colorado. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'm, of course, I'm going to go back home. Gotta to Little go, Rock. Gotta go to Little Rock. You know, yeah. I'm going to go to Little Rock yeah. because, yeah. you know, that's the house. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, do some tastes and some lines around here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just give that taste yeah. of that and what was that, 60 plus lounges in DFW? Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a bit, man. It's, it's quite a bit. Yo, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Uh, so, so I mean, six years, 12 and 18, um, um, what made you choose those numbers? Like we got a seven here. I've, I've, had a, I've had a 10, I've had an eight. <laughs> what makes you, it, it, that that flavor complexity of the six is, is, is better for you for than the eight or, or five or four? The six year gives you a a, a different taste. Mm -hmm. Now that seven year right there, it's a seven year blend. And I do a comparison. I don't want to call nobody's name out, but I do a comparison. There's a lot of rums that will claim and they will say 23 year or they'll say this, but you have to look at the label. It's a 23 year blend. So you can go with the oldest rum that is blended into that batch and call it Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And call it 23. Right, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you that know, right. it's a five, yeah. by the print, right? Yeah. yeah. It's the low print. Yeah. It's the stuff at the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. That people are, man, I got a 23 year. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. a blend, though. Six is a blend from six to 23. Yeah. Like you, like we was talking about the all sorts. That's what you got in that bottle is all sorts. Uh, what you would have in my bottle is a six year age rum mm -hmm. not even period period, period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as the six yeah. year runs the 12 years age as the 12 year runs the 18 years age mm -hmm. and why did i pick six 12 and 18 well i got a, a problem with studying you know the the sacred geometry you know three six and nine mm -hmm. is the spiritual code mm -hmm. you know so with the six year you got the six. Mm -hmm. With the 12 year, one and two is three. You got your three. With the 18 year, one and eight is nine. Three, six, nine. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dang, bro. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. Man, man. So, so uh, for, for, um, you know, the, talking about entrepreneurship, man. All you hear is trademark, trademark, trademark. How, how important trademark? Should you get it early? Should you do the homework first? Like, what's the significance about getting trademark? So the trademark, if you, if you, he was a launch right now and the trademark wasn't even started, right? So trademark wasn't even started. He put his, he put his label out. He got his logo, right? He got everything rolling. Um, somebody on the street can try it, do their research. And this thing, yeah. Like mine? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. Just like that. Mm-hmm. Just like that, and now luckily we in the, we are in, in just a little a little bit of education on it. We are in the day day and age of of digital age, right? Yeah. So if you ever went to court, he could fight that if somebody did that to him because he's been working on this stuff all behind the scenes. Yeah. He's all the all the communication he had with the distributor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you go to court, a judge is gonna be able to see. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he and he will nine times he or she will nine times out of ten side with him because he got all the documentation for it. But it's just a pain in the ass. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. In order to flush out. So if you just wait and just 
the trademark is leased. Don't have to be done. It just needs to be applied for. It. You got to be right. committed. Yeah, yes. it just needs to be applied for. As long as you do that, then you can take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to add to that, you know, a lot of people already know, taking it back to Arkansas. You know, Arkansas is known for a lot of cotton and rice and, you know, what have you. And, you know, Eli Whitney mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. patented the cotton gin. Yeah. He didn't build it. He didn't make it. So that goes back into that trademark. If you don't trademark it and somebody comes in patented, that's their patent. Mm -hmm. But that trademarking protects you and all your work. Yeah. Yeah. And you, can say, you can say it's yours. Sure. Now, now, now there's a, there, what's, what's the difference between patent and trademark? The patent is like if you, this, this ring light that we got going in front of us, uh, a patent is more of like, an actual piece of equipment, mm -hmm. you know, you need to get the, the, um, all the specs, you know, kind of covered in, in that patent, you know, you get everything, all the pieces that it takes to make that in that patent. Mm -hmm. A lot more detail, yeah. not, not just the name to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like with, for Rebel, uh, I didn't even trademark the logo of Rebel. I trademarked the R-E-B-Y-L. Yeah. It's just simply. Yeah. So yeah. now that, now that covers us in the pocket of event hosting, we're covered for that. Yep. You know? Yep. Now, everything else you branch off, yeah, I may not be necessarily covered or trademarked in Rebel Digital's print right now. However, the overall Rebel Entertainment, we are we are it is, yep. is trademarked. Yep. That was so, Rebel we talking about. Yeah, mm -hmm. So so yep. it allows us to move forward, and then later on we can go back and, and cover all the bases. Yeah. 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 Black Mountain, I mean, you mentioned uh, uh, one of the, I guess, difficult things for you was getting started. What can you tell maybe a new entrepreneur or something uh, that, that you can recommend? Uh, somebody on the couch want to start something, just start it? Like, is, is it that easy? Like, well, what would you recommend? First recommendation is write down your stuff so you know what path you want to go. Mm -hmm. Because everybody knows your mind changes, you know, all the time. But if you write it down, it keeps you on the path of all right. This is the goal. Yeah. Now, can you just go out and start an LLC? You can't. You can't. You got you know all of these different companies that will give you a LLC behind whatever name. Yeah. But now, after you get that LLC, what now? You know, yeah. if you don't get that second, third, and fourth step, and I always say. You know, everybody knows when they went, go and talk to their supervisor or their superior, they got that follow-up question. You can go and tell them, hey, I got X and O right here. Yeah. And they're going to ask you, so what if one of the X's fall off? What happens after that? Uh, uh, so at least, at least have a a, a, a plan of attack. Yes. Step one, step, two steps ahead? Yes. Okay. Okay. Always set yourself up for success, not for failure. Mm -hmm. You know, having an idea is good. Write the idea down. Then come back to it. Write down what's next. Mm -hmm. Then after that, what's next after that? Like we talked about with Umbrella and with your company. Yeah. You know, don't change your company. Upgrade your company that you didn't already got started and make that something that falls up under your company's mm -hmm. moniker. You know, you got... Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola got several different brands that's up under yeah, the Coca-Cola yeah, market. Yeah, you're right. You know yeah, what I'm saying? You're right. You don't now, even know it. The, yeah, yeah, the thing you. about that, there's yeah, two sodas out there that's not up under anybody's monetary. And those two sodas is Dr. Pepper and 7-Up. Mm. They go on anybody's because Dr. Pepper stands on its own, which is made down there in Waco, Texas. You know, started down there. But you have to get yourself set for success, not failure. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope for sure. For sure. What you, what you smoking on tonight, Jay? Man, I don't even know. I got to ask my brother. What, what am I smoking on? That right there is a DR Medio. I brought that back from Dominican Republic, and that's a medium. And the first one that you hear was uh, a light. Mm -hmm. But those came from DR from one of the um, cigar manufacturers that I talked to out there. Yeah. Do, do, do you, you got a favorite cigar? I don't. You got a favorite region? Yes. Um, hmm. <laughs> I, I like the way you asked it. Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, 
me, I'm I'm a fan of the DR Leafs mm -hmm. because they give you a nice ending. When you first hit it, you're going to... But as you get down through the cigar, it's always a beautiful ending. Yeah, always a beautiful ending. Now, second to them would be Nick Rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then after that, 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 that it would be that's debatable. We, we could debate that. I'll, I'll say good. I'll say Nick versus me. Nick, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. little bit more bold of leaves to me. Uh, yes. a little bit more peppery. You know, yes, from, from my palate. Um, don't get me wrong, I do I do like Dr. But I'm more of a, a street person. Okay. Uh, and that's okay. what Nick Rock will bring. Okay. A little bit more bold. See, I like the South Carolina tobacco leaves also. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh... so, 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 so I'm still, I'm still a rookie in the game. So I'm leaning on you guys, but I'm a sweet tip guy. So I like fat bottom beds. Ain't no wrong with that. Hey, uh, fat bottom beds. I think it was number one selling cigar in America last year. Really? I mean, yes, yeah, I think so. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Sure. But my, if I had to say a favorite cigar, I mentioned earlier in Tampa, there's a a cigar um, factory, right, or shop, and they make them right there in front of you. It's called Long Gas mm -hmm. Cigar on 7th Ave. Um, and they do these real skinny, they call them torpedoes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's got the sweet tip in them, man. I, that's my favorite cigar. Um, so when I when I go back home, you can order them online, but when I go back home, I, I, I get about 100 of them, and I'll bring them back and just have them. Yeah. You know? Now, some people say those, those, they have more of a, they hit you. Mm -hmm. You know, so some people don't like those, but that's me. I'm not. I don't consider myself necessarily a cigar guy, yeah. but I'm I'm around you guys a lot, like a lot of cigar connoisseurs, if you will. Yeah. Um. So if I had to pick one, man, that's my joint. You know, yeah, the, the torpedo from Long Ash Cigar. Go and try it when you're in town, please. Hey, what, what's what's missed about cigars, man? And, and we keep talking about is networking cigars. Yeah. Man. There you go. I've met some of the. You you would never understand the people. How did I meet these people uh -huh. over over cigars? Yes. And especially going to the cigar conventions in Vegas and just doing my own cigar mm -hmm. and something. Uh, uh, so definitely, uh, cigar man is a great marketing. Oh thing. no doubt, without so, a doubt. So, so you got to smoke. Right? You got it's, it's like it's like another frat. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It's a select group. Yeah. But yeah. I, and I like the way you alluded to that. That's fantastic because me, I'm a motorcycle rider. I saw it. I saw the shirt. Indian, yeah. Indian? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We I'm both in, we both Indian riders. Oh, he got me. He got me on Indian. Hey, I, I, I wish I, uh, Indian is. If I had to choose a a, um, a cruiser, I guess you would mm -hmm. call it, it. It would be Indian. You, go. you know how to run? Their pockets are deep though. Mm -hmm. You know how to run? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a street bike guy. I got a JC 1000 in the garage. Oh, I had a CBR 1000 and a ZX 12 R. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, you, so, you graduated to the, to the <laughs> end, <yeah>. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm be honest with you. If I can be real with you for a second, now my um, my body graduated. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm be honest with you. You know, my knees tell me I didn't yeah. like getting balled up. Yeah. You know? So my body graduated me to somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. stretch back out a little bit. You know, I'm like sitting back, man. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Just hanging out. Yeah. 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 And sure. you know, if you have time, come down and at me, man. I put you on that Indian. Man, I might fall in love. You know, I'm, 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 I'm still trying to be a little bit, little rebel out here, man. You know, let me let me go. Let me hey, hey you, still, you still, you still, hey, you still, you still, you still rocking out, man. But at some point, at some point, them bones gonna say, "Hey, man, bro." Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Rob, I see you join me, Rob. How you doing, sir? Salute. All bro. good, my man. All good. Sorry, I'm late. Cheers. No worries. No worries. What you got going on tonight, sir? Went and hung out with my wife and daughter, had dinner. Bella got a new job today, so she's excited. There you go. There you go. We're uh, uh so so we so we got a couple guys in here. We're talking about rum. You a rum fan, Rob? I like me some rum, but I I tend to be more of the coconut sweet rum, so I should just be smack now. Oh. I know it's not family. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna judge you. So so my actual my favorite one to, to sip when I'm when I'm smoking one now is called Coconut Cartel. You heard of that one? I have. You tried that I one? Can't yet? Think, I haven't tried that one. The one I've been drinking, and I can't think of the name of it actually, but it's by Kenny Chesney's brand. Okay. 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 Yeah. So he that's has coconut, coconut rum, banana rum, and a pineapple rum. Mm -hmm. I do about an ounce of each over ice together. Nice. So it's like the pina colada without all the sugar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That that coconut 
it's gonna be a it's a rum cup with coconut water. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's just sweet enough. You, it's we sound like Rob. We we're, we're kind of like I, I I do sweet tips and I like the a little bit of sweetness going down. Yeah. And that coconut cartel is just I mean it's just right, man. Yeah. So who brought that to your doorstep? <laughs> without a doubt, without a doubt. Hey, hey, so you, Rob will be here on on uh, uh, March seventh. I'm gonna see you, man. I'm, I'm gonna make sure yeah, I'm in the if in the building. If you're in town, man, come and blow smoke. Uh, in the Rob, Rob, my brother, brother, man. We're gonna have a good time. Yeah, yeah, awesome. for sure, Definitely. awesome, for sure. So, 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 save it. I'm gonna bring you a bottle of coconut cartel. Just save it when you're here, and we're gonna have a bottle together, man. And, and, and smoke I'm in. Man. Cool. I don't know. Rob might be uh he leaned towards tequila a little bit. Rob. Ooh, oui. There's nothing wrong with that. Ooh, oui. <laughs> just don't just don't mess with that tequila in your stick. <laughs> nope. So uh, he actually reached out to me today for the first time in two and a half months because he got a letter from my attorney, Rockstar. Oh uh, well we're uh okay. Well we are recording, Rob. Just let us know. <laughs> I didn't say who or what. Yeah, no doubt, mm -hmm. no doubt, no doubt. Okay, okay. Right. Yeah. Hey, that's hey, that's grown, that's grown man stuff there. You know, that's yep. what that's what it is. You know, but, unfortunately, that's how you got to settle things sometimes. Oh, man. But all joking aside about the sweet part of the coconut and the pineapple, growing up on the coast of Florida, eating a lot of fish, pineapple and coconut were incorporated into a ton of our dishes. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, with the fish and. I kind of, I guess I never grew out of it, even though I left. Oh, I'm going to explain It's kind of like once you've lived in Texas, you don't walk away from Texas brisket. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's fast. Yeah, without a couple doubt. of burnt ends. <laughs> yeah. 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 What part of Florida, what part of Florida, Rob? I grew up on the East Coast in Titusville, where the Titusville, Kennedy Space yeah. Center is. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm from Tampa, man. So not too, too far. Two and a half <laughs> hour drive. I was there a lot as a kid. So. Used to go every year or when they would have it. The, I don't know if you remember the, them calling it the toilet bowl when the Buccaneers and Oilers would play. Well, yeah, definitely. I definitely remember. It. It's it's a whole lot of it's a whole lot of um, toilet like references to my team, my, my Buccaneers. <laughs> I mean, in the eighties, it was just ugly. <laughs> but you know, as a kid in late seventies and eighties, I didn't care who won or lost. I was just excited to be at a game. That's it, man. Thanks. That's it. Man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. and that's one thing. That's one thing I got to say this about about my Bucks, right? I got to throw them a little bone. When you go to the Buck game, we so used to losing, man. Don't even matter. Yeah, you know, we we get we be getting beat forty nine to six. And we're gonna have a great time. Yeah. <laughs> we don't let you win. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we win. win. So, <laughs> since you guys are the rum guys, have you ever dipped your, the tip of your cigar into a spiced rum? Yeah. He said, he's saying since we're your rum guy, uh -huh. have you ever dipped this tip of your cigar into a spice rum? I actually put a whole like a uh, shot on the cigar and let it sit on oh, the wow. napkin. I wrapped the, the paper towel around the cigar once I had put it in the rum, and then I smoked it after that. Yeah, it's fantastic. But don't do it with a wet cigar because it'll burn up fast. I can I'm see gonna, that. I ain't going to tell you how I learned. <laughs> I've actually thought about taking a few cigars and dropping them into empty rum bottles and letting mm -hmm. them get the aromatics after, you know, let them sit in there for a week or so. Yeah. Let them marinate, huh? I might have to try that now. Now I'm curious. But if you roll it in a, in a paper towel, you know, put your rum on the, on the cigar, wrap it in a paper towel, let it sit for a little bit. I say a couple of hours. And then fire it up after that with you a nice little glass. You don't need no rock center or anything like that. And I'm telling you, you're going to have a fantastic experience. I will have to try that. No spice rum, though. It's too many caramels and sugars in there. Mm. So would you, since you're a cigar guy as well, would you recommend doing that with a more of a Connecticut, a Habano, Maduro? Where do you Madero. think that would match up? No, you you was right on on point with the Madero. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sweeten up, mellow it out a little bit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just to keep it nice and easy. You hit the nail on the head with the Madero. Mm -hmm. So Rob, we, Rob was also was also talking about uh, of course we got Black Mallet with, with the rum brand starting off. 
we got a uh, rebel uh, with the digital media marketing company. We're talking about some some entrepreneurship, and maybe some heartaches. Rob, I know you, you know I, I know you got entrepreneurial spirit. What what would be a, a hiccup for you, man? Uh, if you, if you want to share about just getting started with a company, I think the biggest thing I would say about when I you start a company is don't chase squirrels, <laughs> because my experience has been you come out with whatever the idea is for a product or service mm -hmm. that everybody else that you know is going to throw, Oh, you could do this. You could do that. And so you become a Jack of all trades and master of none. And uh -huh. your attention uh -huh. gets divided. I'm more of a master the first one, then start layering on. But if you don't have a foundation, it's mm -hmm. like quicksand. Hmm. I like, that. I can, I can, I can um, definitely co-sign on that. Just because, you know, you, just because you see it and you can do it, don't mean you should do it, right? Um, and that's, or maybe just not right now. <laughs> well, and you know, there's always lots of good ideas. It doesn't mean you should discount them. See. But I rep, I say put them on the shelf in the garage until it's time to open the garage door. See, he alluded to uh, lighting uh, it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Right on. Right so, on. Rob, educate me. What What did you into on entrepreneur entrepreneur lane? Educate us. Oh, let's see. I've run four tech companies, a marketing firm, and a family office. Awesome. So it looks like, too, maybe we can talk on some collaboration on the marketing side. All right. All for it. I come out of a family of entrepreneurs. Uh, going back to several great grandfathers, but my grandfather owned a coal mine. He owned car dealerships, insurance agencies. My okay. dad owned contracting companies. All right. And I did corporate life for, I think, five years after school. Mm -hmm. Then the realization for me more than anything was nobody's going to pay me what I think I'm worth. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. And I hated putting forth all the effort and being promised you'll get X, Y, Z. Then because of politics in the company or other things, mm -hmm. your performance didn't always necessitate a move forward. For sure. Ooh, yeah. ooh, that's a hard and I, that. I just didn't care for that. And I didn't like other people choosing my destiny. Yeah, man. Mm. Man. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a lot. That's a whole lot. There. Yeah. yeah. I see why he your dude. That's yeah. <laughs> he hit a hard pull. Yeah. That's my brother. The politics, yeah. politics and anything, it, it can ruin your company. Yeah. Yeah. The you other keep... piece of advice I would give is just enjoy what you do. It doesn't mean it has to be your hobby, but love what you do. Because if you don't, it's just going to turn into a job for yourself. Drain that drain, man. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, we seem to hear that a lot. It, it sounds pretty cliche. I mean, I, I, we're all co-signed on it, but the, the, like, how how much does that hit home? Like, it, it, you know, it sounds cliche. Man. Everybody says, it. "Man, if so." For me, that nugget was not more so like what I was what I was going to get into as far as functionally. I just knew. Number one, I wanted to be able to be in a position where I could, um, you know, facilitate for people and then, you know, mentor and give back. So I knew for sure that whatever I was going to get into, it had to have that because that's what I'm passionate about, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and really, yeah. no matter what, no matter what area of business you get into, that that's always a thing, right? Yep. Uh, but yep. for me, it just hit, it hit close to home. So here, like for the One Texas Studios thing, we, we have a a slight partnership with Media Tech, which is a um, a school here in Dallas that teaches um, media production, audio production, and it's 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 a endless stream of of talent that we can kind of plug plug in with to get people to come out and um and kind of assist us, man, in, in doing what we're doing. So to me, that made a lot of sense. <clears throat> yeah. One of my biggest things is you have to be a servant to others. A lot of people that start out businesses, they're looking at it as a self-fulfillment. Yeah. But if yeah. you're not putting out a service for others or you're not into giving a service, this might not be your lane. Mm -hmm. You know, because you can easily fall prey to this person is trying to take my dream. No, your dream is to bring a service to somebody. Yeah. So that in that indirectly makes you a servant. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, but if you, you lose focus, lose that, yeah, oh, yeah. you lose focus of that. That's true. That's how people fail. It's not knowing that what I'm bringing is a service to others. And that's why I keep bringing up the whole blue collar thing because the whole blue collar thing, tell me right now what alcohol or what brand is bringing something to the blue collar work. I mean, something I can't think of nothing. Yeah. I was, I was trying to get a cigar guy hat on. It's, it's, it's just, uh, no, everybody's usually hidden. So, 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 so there, there, the there is a cigar guy at protocol. Juan can't sell. He has protocol cigars. He's a, he's a former police officer. I think his motivation behind his cigar was his police service. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so maybe that can be said uh -huh. blue collar. Yes. Oh, but that's that's the only thing I can and that's I, I can think of. That is ninety seven percent. Three percent is business owners and people that's putting out stuff that's untouchable. You're not gonna shake it. But ninety seven percent of what you are doing is towards the working class. Uh, yeah. And it's overlooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see that you got to be the most interesting man and I'm not trying to take nobody's stuff and I'm not trying to take nobody's marketing. But if you're not at the party mm -hmm. or you're not the most interesting man, you don't get a drink. Yeah. You don't get nothing. Without, without a doubt. Not just, not, just, not just a drink. Not just a drink, but the service and the feeling of it. Like, yes. where's the one place we all frequent that when we go, we happen to give our money. It's Chick-fil-A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And and it's when you go to Chick Fil A, it's comparable to all other fast foods for the price, but you're gonna get the service, the service, and the service. and and the and the flavors and everything is gonna be on point yeah. every yeah. time, yeah. consistent, yeah. right? Yeah. So so when y'all mentioned earlier, you, you know, y'all were saying, man, when we when we deal with J J company and business, like we feel like we're getting what we, and that and that was my thing, like absolutely, absolutely. If if it's not gonna fit the, the Chick Fil A moniker, why do it? Mm. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Man, I know it's late, man. We've been rocking and rolling for for a little bit over a couple hours now, almost. Yeah. Um, I like to ask one part of the question. I saw you, Black Matter, man. I know the rum ain't out yet, but you know what would be your selling point? Why somebody should buy your rum? The selling point is that I'm bringing a good flavor rum that's going to be smooth, well blended to pair with cigars. Something that's not going to take all of your money. For you to have something that's quality mm -hmm. you know that's something that we have fell back from and that's something that i saw in the market that was something that needed to be done yeah again that service mm -hmm. um i alluded to me ride motorcycles i also work on classic cars also you know yeah, okay i'm a mechanic by trade jack of all trades master of none you know? <laughs> but um the thing is in those circles, you got mechanics, you got mining key, you got all kinds of different shops around here, but those guys that's working there, who's giving them a service? Who's giving them something that they can be like, you know what, this is for me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's your, your sanitation guy or trash guy, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. who's bringing that man a service mm -hmm. or that woman a service? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Yeah. You know, the blue collar worker has failed back. Back in the day, um, and I'm going to date myself a little bit, in the 80s, people used to look at Curse Light, you know, Curse Light mm -hmm. and Old Milwaukee. They were, those were blue collar drinks yeah. or beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who crushed them out? Budweiser. <laughs> when they came with that Bud Light, you know what I'm saying? But that's where you, you see that service being overlooked. Since then, you know, you got fantastic cognac brands that came out. But who is it catered to? Somebody in the upper echelon mm -hmm. or somebody that's at the party. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can go to the party because they got to get up the next morning. Yeah. So with that being said, who is helping that, that man or woman after that long day of work? Give them something that they can so be happy. Sip on and enjoy. Yeah. 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 So yeah. That's, yeah. that's the service that I would like to bring. That's it. That's it. Long, you know, it was a Long story being long on that one. No, no, that's no, that's no, the reason. No, I got you. I got you. Let's, let's go on to Jay, man. I mean, uh, you got Rebel Digital. You, mm -hmm. you got the marketing. Uh, you got One Texas, man. Or oh, somebody, you know, one stop shop. You got a lot to cover there, man. What's, what's going on with that? So, so same same thing I kind of mentioned earlier. I kind of alluded to 
like my goal moving on this whole entrepreneur lane was to be able to drive down the costs and, and create a Costco or Sam's Club for the people that are entrepreneurs or the people that are um, influencers, right? The models that need X, Y, and Z. Let's be able to take advantage of our networking and be able to pass those cost savings along to the to the common people, mm -hmm. right? Quote unquote common people trying to get into the game. So so really that's what that's that's why I believe that you should come to One Texas, you should come to Rebel Digital, you should come to us because we're going to help you save the money and still get the quality, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, just yeah. like this in, this Indian nice fleece that he got on, he's out on. Yeah. Right. We want to provide that same thing for Rockstar. Hey, you know. Hey, come on. Man. Why not? Come and why on. shouldn't it be in that same quality that Indian has? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I'm gonna drive the cost the cost down, Way just down. like Costco is saying, because yeah. we we've already been doing business with those big. Yeah. Big distributors and things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. So one last question I promise it. Um, mm -hmm. we all we all three brothers on here, people of color. What does it mean? Well, you know, what does it mean to you guys to be people of color doing this service for, for, for I mean, just for the folks, just to be people. So so that so that's what it is. It's and it's black like history month, I will say. Already. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One hey, one more day, a day, a day and some change. <laughs> <laughs> we got to leave it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, growing up, I just man, I the people I saw when I was growing up, they were either selling dope, right? They might have had a, a, a tire shop or a rim shop, mm -hmm. but they was using that as a cover because they were selling dope, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But why can't we, why can't we step into the same lanes of quality as the next person, mm -hmm. right? So that's my that's my motivation, Try, trying to work with each other, mm -hmm. right? In order to bring that money into our communities, and let it stay a little while longer, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Not saying that we got to keep it in our community because that's unrealistic, right? Agreed. But why not Agreed. allow it to circulate within our circles for a little while longer? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Now, yeah. for me, I've already let you know I'm a project kid, you know. For me, I want to be the example because I've seen so many people walk around in this invisible cage of I can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they feel I came from here, so I can't do that. Mm. No, I will. I want to be the example. Whether you know, I push this all the way through, but I want to be the example to show. No, you don't have to stay there. Mm -hmm. You know, there are other avenues. There are other routes. You don't have to stay within a quote unquote trap. Yeah. So, being a black entrepreneur and doing something different. Is showing a generation behind me that it is possible to do something different. It is possible to beat the trap. Yeah. It is possible to get out of that that cell without walls, which is your mind. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, for sure, for sure, man. I appreciate the conversation, man. Um, we gonna it's, it's being late. I, I think one of y'all got my. Oh, so oh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, no, you good. Okay, we gonna shut down here. Hey, we got Rebel on One Texas Studios. We got we got Black Melt on. Man, catch this every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Central. Um, I'll see the vibes, man. I appreciate y'all. See y'all next week. And uh appreciate y'all. Appreciate you, Rockstar. Yeah, for sure. As always, man. For sure. And tune in. Tune in. All right, y'all.